So, welcome back. We will now start formally the theory of semi groups. Again, this topic is again may be new to many of you. So, you have to really uh, understand the new concepts and work out the full details. So, all the details again cannot be given. So, let me begin with a formal definition of what a semi group is. Okay. So, so let x be a Banach space. So, I am not going to say that whether it is real or complex. So, it can be either one uh, Banach space. So, I denote by B x the space of all linear bounded uh, operators from x into itself. So, a family T t t non negative real number uh, contained in B x. So, each one of them is a linear continuous operator from x into itself is called a semi group so in textbooks you actually see this uh, expanded version so one parameter Uh, strongly continuous semi group. So, we just abbreviate strongly continuous or even C 0 the semi group. Okay. So, every time we will not write that. So, this one parameter refers to this T non negative. Okay. So, in the end I will make a remark on multi parameter. So, that means, T is also uh, either in R n or R n plus. Okay. So, I will make a comment on that. If, so there are essentially two conditions. So, I will just write two conditions. So, T of T 1 plus T 2 T 1 T 2 for all T 1 T 2 non negative. So, I will include here itself this T 0 is identity. Okay. The second condition this is the strong continuity. So, this is called semi group property. and then the strong continuity actually strong continuity only at the origin at t equal to 0. Okay. So, this limit. So, some in some textbook you also see there is a letter s is added, but we do not need that. So, just uh, t t x minus x. So, this is the norm in the Banach space x as t is changed to 0 e 0 for all x in x. Okay. So, this is different from the uniform converge. So, this we say that t t converges to the identity in the strong topology not uniform topology. Okay. So, if T t is defined for all t 
overall uh, T T is defined. T T is defined. for all t in r of course satisfying the uh, semi group property and strong continuity we say that t t is a group is a group so in this case so we have when t t is a group so we see that T of minus T. So, they are all invertible operators. Okay. So, everyone in this family is an invertible operator. Okay. So, let me state a result. So, immediately. Okay. So, let T T be a so, let me not okay. let T T be a semi group. Then uh, there exists a constant bigger than equal to 1 and omega a real number such that uh, norm of T T is less than or equal to m e to the omega T for all T greater than or equal to 0. And the second one so, in the definition we, <coughs> we only assume that uh, this family is continuous only at t equal to 0 and now uh, the mapping t going to t t x. So, this is from r plus 0 infinity. So, into x is continuous. Okay. So, I am not going to prove that, but just it is an uh, immediate application of the first part follows from the uniform bounded boundedness principle and uh, the second one follows from the first part. Okay, so, this uh, is not very difficult. Okay. So, the, so, I already see here in this estimate somewhat exponential nature of this semi group. Okay. So, the next important concept is of generator of T T. generate. So, it is also called infinitesimal generator. Okay. So, I will not use that T T. So, that is our next definition. Okay. So, for tau positive put a tau equal to tau inverse T tau minus identity. So, again of course, this belongs to B x. Okay. So, here is the definition. So, the infinitesimal generator. So, let me write once because in textbooks this is what you see. A is defined by uh, 
ax is equal to limit a tau x x tau stands to 0 plus ok for all those x x for which the limit exists uh, for which the limit exists of course this limit is in the norm of x ok so that you keep on verifying ok so these are all elements in a tau x they are all elements in as tau varies so they are elements in the Banach space x and so this limit is also in the norm of x ok so thus this domain of a ok so this is domain of a set of all x in x such that this limit exists so let me write and a is defined a of x is defined uh, at this limit ok. At this stage it is only clear that d a is a subspace of the Banach space x and a is linear that is very clear because all these a tau's are linear. So, a is also linear certainly uh, the 0 vector is in d a, but apart from that as of now we do not know uh, whether how large d a is uh, ok. So, that is our next result ok that is. So, let me state that So, let me not write everything in the hypothesis. So, this we are always uh, when general discussion is there. So, T t is a semi group and A is its generator ok. So, three parts. So, d A is a subspace and A is linear this is clear from the definition ok. If x belongs to d A then this mapping t going to a t x t t x is differentiable and d by d t of t t x is equal to t t a x and this is also equal to a t t x ok and third part. So, the domain of the generator is quite large ok. So, d a is dense in x and a is a a is closed a is closed. So, a is a closed linear operator ok ok. Now, just look at the uh, second part ok. So, if we define
u of t is equal to t t x, x is in t a, then u is actually differentiable and we have this. A u and u 0 of course is x. So, we already see that the semi groups are useful in studying this what I call abstract Cauchy problem A C P. So, this we will discuss little later also abstract Cauchy problem. So, this Cauchy problem is stated in the Banach space. Okay. Uh, so, we have a solution for this given this semi group uh, and that here is generator of that semi group. Okay. <coughs> so, essentially we see that so this A C P is always uh, solvable whenever this A can generate a semi group. Okay. So, I will also define that what that means. Okay. A small digression here, I will just uh, come back to this proofs, okay, small digression. So, even if I am not using all this uh, uh, <coughs> concepts, but they are useful when you study the proofs in detail. Uh, by looking into some textbooks. Okay. So, here so we are using here continuity differentiability. Okay. So, let me make a general comment. So, let a b be an interval okay, in R. So, what we are considering and consider a mapping consider f from a b to x. So, these are Banach valued functions defined on an interval. Okay. So, since this is a matrix space that is also a matrix space. So, we can certainly talk of continuity. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> since in a Banach space we can introduce different topologies, but here I always use this norm topology. Okay. So, with respect to the norm topology we can talk of continuity and of course, uh, we can also talk of differentiability between ma mappings between two Banach spaces, but that requires uh, the notion of either <coughs> Ghetto derivative or Fréché derivative, okay, but that goes into linear operators on the Banach spaces. But in this special case, where the domain is an interval, so differentiability is also no problem. Okay, so we can just uh, okay. So usual, you take the difference quotients divided by h. This I we can do because this is a scalar. Okay. So, this is an element in x and if this converges to some element in, uh, in x, then we say that f is differentiable at this point and we denote this by f prime t. Okay. So, this is because of this one dimension nature. Okay. This we cannot do uh, in higher dimension. Okay. Then we have to go to uh, either ghetto derivative or Fréché derivative, but in this case. So, essentially using for uh, intervals in r this is fine for us. Okay. 
and again we can also define the integral of a continuous function. So, same Riemann upper sum, upper Riemann sums and lower Riemann sums uh, <coughs> integral of f. Okay. So, for the scalar case wherever you use absolute value that you replace by the norm that is the only uh, <coughs> change you see. Okay. The same theory can be developed even for continuous functions uh, with values in a Banach space. So, in particular, so we can define this a f t d t. Okay, and of course, this is an element in the Banach space. Okay, so absolutely no problem. Okay, so in particular, we have. Let me just state that. So norm of a to b f t d t is less than or equal to uh, integral a to b norm of f t d t. And again, this integral is defined as limit of uh, some sums. So again, so if uh, let me use a different. So, if s is in b x, okay, then uh, s of this index. So, this is an element in uh, x. Okay, so, this is just integral a to b s of f t this is by the continuity. So, in fact, we can just improve that. So, if a is closed, so if this a is not generator, okay, just uh, let me use different. If B is closed, uh, and F T belongs to D B, and this integral F T also belongs to D B, then. this b of integral a b f t d t is same as a to b so even just closeness is sufficient provided the image of f is in the uh, domain of B along with this integral because this integral is limit. So, e in general it may not be in d B. So, we are assuming that also in d B and then you used uh, this closed property to get this thing. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so, this of course, I am just doing for continu continuous functions. So, one can even define integrable uh, class of such functions uh, and they are required when we consider the evolution equation uh, in the weak formulation, uh, but since we are uh, doing via the semi group theory this continuity and differentiability is sufficient for uh, our purposes. Okay. So, with this small digression let me just quickly uh, show you uh, how the results of this theorem con regarding the generator uh, are proved. Okay. So, let me just consider that uh, 
2 and 3. So, not in full detail, but uh, okay. Proof. Okay, so, this is for the generator. Okay, so, let x belongs to the domain of the generator A. So, what we have to show is uh, the mapping T going to T T x is differentiable. So, you consider the difference quotient. Okay. So, T of T plus H uh, minus T of okay. let me put that x T T x and T inverse. Okay, so, I am fixing a T positive and first you consider H positive. So, similarly you can consider H. So, this one using semi group property. So, you see that uh, no sorry it is not T inverse it is H inverse that is the difference quotient. Okay. So, this is a T of T H inverse uh, T of H minus identity X. Okay. So, this is also equal to H inverse uh, T H minus I T T X. This is just semi group property. Now, look at the middle term, middle term especially this one in the bracket. So, since X is in D A, we know that this converges to so T T and T is T T is continuous. Okay. And that shows that the limit exists in other two terms also and that is what we immediately see d by d t of t t x t t a x and that is equal to a t. So, we also see that this a and T T they commute on the domain of uh, <coughs> A. Okay. Uh, so, so similarly if work out for H negative, but you have to keep so the T minus H has to be uh, T plus has to be positive. Okay. So, you have to take only small h and say same computation. Okay. So, this proves to statement 2. Okay. So, the statement 3 regarding the density of uh, uh, the domain d a and closeness. Okay. So, just let me just. So, you also if you integrate, so the you get an important relation here. So, T T x minus x and if you see the proofs because we are, we are not going to do many proofs. So, these are repeatedly used. So, T s a x d s. So, remember x is in d a otherwise this is not even defined. So, just this just follows uh, by integrating that relation from 0 to t. Okay. As far as the third statement is concerned that the density of d a is dense. Okay. So, 
So, consider this. So, let x belongs to x and consider this element 0 to t t s s d s t positive. So, this is an element in x okay. and now you consider this a tau of 0 to t x d s. Okay. So, by the stated properties of the integral and interchange of continuous operators with the integral and some manipulation of the integ uh, this limits. So, you finally, so tau is positive. So, tau inverse 0 to tau T s T T minus i. So, this is an easy exercise. Okay. And now, because this is continuous function in the integrand. So, by averaging, so that converges to T 0 T T minus I x, which is simply T T x minus x as tau tends to 0. So, according to the definition that means, this is in d a and its value a of that is given by this. Okay. Okay, to see just see the density, so further we see that 1 by t 0 to t t s x d s converges to x again in Banach space x as t tends to 0. Okay. So, these elements are in d a and this is only a scalar factor. So, by linearity again these elements are in d a, they are in d a okay. and they converge to x. So, for any x in x, so we can find a sequence of elements in d a that converge to x. Okay. So, that proves the density and the closeness you use, let me just say that closeness. So, again you recall the definition. So, let x n belongs to d a. x n converges to some x and a x n converges to y. So, what we have to show is x belongs to d a and a x is equal to y. So, you just use this relation. So, that is what I wrote that ah, here. Now, you since x n are in d a, so you just use that. Okay, so, we have uh, T x n no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, just just one line I will just T x n minus x n is equal to 0 to T T s a x n d s and by continuity of T t and this convergence. So, the left hand side 
converges to T T x minus x and the right hand side you convince yourself ok. So, we can take interchange the limit and integral and you do get 0 to T T s a x n converges to y. So, I get y ok. You just convince yourself that. So, in fact, you, you can use the boundedness of this T s and you do that ok. And now, you divide by T and uh, let T goes to 0 and that proves that x is in d a and a x equal to y. Okay. So, let me stop here and <coughs> we will consider some examples in the next class. Thank you.